Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. And this Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is going to be the recap of season number two of Team Mom, the next chapter. This is episode number two. They've added Mackenzie. I still don't know why they've added her to the show. And I still don't quite understand why we needed eight or nine moms for a 42 minute show. But alrighty then. Okay. As per usual, Amber, we don't give a damn about your new flavor of the month. Okay. We don't give a damn. What you need to get is some new medication. Because apparently in this episode, you're not on any. Anyway, if you don't take your... I'm not even going to insult anyone because somebody here has alopecia. I don't even have eyebrows. So I ain't got nothing to say about him not having hair. I really don't have anything to say. All I will say is he scared the F out of me when he popped his ass up on the video chat. And what is the purpose of him popping up here when he's a guy and y'all are in a female chat? Do any of the other women have their men in their video chats? We are at Gary and Christina's house and they've set up to have a 15th birthday dinner for Leah at the local Italian food restaurant. As per usual, they have to invite Amber. So they do. More pictures of Gary. Yes, his name is Gary. She's saying how it's going to be so busy because it's Leah's birthday. It's not like you're planning it, um, Amber. It's not like you're planning it. What are you? What exactly are you doing except being invited? And she's like, James is coming over in a couple of days again. Why are they bringing James to you? Like you're lazy. Like you literally don't do anything. Um, she's on the phone with Gary now talking about this dinner that she's not even going to be on time for. We're going to get the introduction to Mackenzie. You know, I feel like they shouldn't even clue a lot of y'all in. If you didn't watch Family Reunion, if you didn't have to suffer through uh, Family Reunion this season. You shouldn't even get filled in at all. Like Mackenzie was in a relationship with Josh when they were teenagers and they got married because, you know, down is Oklahoma considered South? Child, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, I can look it up, but I don't feel like it. But anyway, um, they ended up getting married because, you know, they, you know, when you get pregnant, get married down there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then they ended up having two more children. Mackenzie's mom passed away due to cancer. And after she passed away due to cancer, Mackenzie's just like, you know what? I got to just realize I'm not happy, you know? She divorced Josh finally. Finally, girl. You was letting him you was letting him do whatever he wanted. Okay. It was about time. I was very relieved that the girl, you know, it takes some time sometimes. If you ever see your friends and you know that they're with this person they don't need to be with, I pray that eventually they escape. Some people don't. They just end up unhappy for 20 years, married in a in a a loveless marriage, okay? But um I'm very happy whenever I see a woman or a man free from torture. Child, I'd be happy for them. You just do not understand. So after the divorce, Josh moved back to Oklahoma and Mackenzie stayed in Florida. And um, Josh doesn't financially support the children. All three of his children. And I know you don't see them either because you're way in Oklahoma. That's a damn shame. I will never understand deadbeats. And I especially will never understand deadbeats who was married to the mama. Like you didn't have a baby's mama. You had a wife and you going to neglect three of your children. You going to neglect three, not one, not two, but all three of your children. You're a scum of the freaking earth. Things are getting better now for Mackenzie now that she has been dating a man named Cassanio and she's been dating him for over a year. He is a coach and soccer player. The kids love him. First and foremost, most importantly, the kids love Cassanio. And from what I recall from Team Mom Family Reunion, Josh, who doesn't like black people very much. Now there's a black man raising your children. Womp womp. <laughs> that how life works life is very funny like that but anyway so in this scene Mackenzie is talking to the children about Cassanio moving in and they're okay with it and girl you asking them you already knew what was gonna happen because you're already moving in three days later but Cassanio is moving in okay and takes a, a takes a good man and I'm not gonna sing any good man songs can't think of any anyway 
can't think of any. You're lucky. But um, to take on a woman, a single, a single mom with three children and, um, you know, involve himself in their lives and want to help them to grow and nurture them. That takes a very strong, powerful, loving, kind man. And that to me says a lot about Cassanio, actually. Leah was just so busy, busy, busy that she couldn't go to Jade and Sean's wedding. Girl, you could have made time if you wanted to. Okay. Leah tells us that she got her real estate license, but it's, she's finding it hard to get a job. So in the interim, Leah has decided to take a waitressing position. Ma'am, you've been on Teen Mom, some kind of Teen Mom. Okay. It's been over 10 years and I am not one to frown down on anybody you know, that needs any type of work because I've worked all kinds of jobs. All right. I've worked all kinds of jobs when I need the money. And this tells me that you obviously need the money. Why is MTV not giving you money? You were literally in the last season of Team Mom Family Reunion. And I know they paid you for that. MTV, y'all dropping the ball money wise because she shouldn't have the waitress. That is some hard work. You're going to hurt your back, girl. But I do got to respect a hardworking woman. I, I, I will tell you that. I always respect somebody that says, you know what, instead of being a career criminal, I'm going to, I'm not going to keep picking on him. I'm sorry, but I'm going to actually go out here and get me a, a waitressing job. And I respect it. Leah gets a phone call from her wayward sister, Victoria. Can I stand that lady? Anyway, how's Rohair? I ain't forgot. Victoria says, I got to talk to you in person about something. Yada, yada, yada. So she comes right on over. A lot of y'all lost weight on here and some of y'all gained, but it's all right. You know, the Lord loves a healthy eater anyway, including me. Anyway, though, Victoria comes over to Leah to let her know that their dad has decided probably for the 20th, 20th time. I don't know how many times he's done it to go into detox and if she can be supportive of him. And Victoria, I don't know why you don't understand that Leah has distanced herself on purpose from her addict father. She's done it on purpose, not by accident. And you can tell when you look at Leah's face that she's very uncomfortable and she's like wanting to support her dad. But if he does not stay in detox, she's out. She don't have no time for it. She doesn't want her girls around it. And she doesn't want to be around it being a former addict herself. Now, Cheyenne is here with Zach. He over here researching careers he can't get. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen. Um, I am not anti-felon, depending on what kind of felony it is. Because some of these felonies that y'all be collecting, first of all, a felony is a very serious charge, okay? I'm not going to say where I work, but a felony is a very serious charge. This ain't no old, old, no little bit, no itty bitty look out. I, I, I punched somebody in the face, which is, that's a bit much, but that's a misdemeanor when you hit somebody. But you committed a felony, bro. You committed a huge amount of money you stealing or you stole somebody's identity or you kill somebody you actually you know what them because youtube they be playing too much with you you know you really gotta be careful what word you use on this damn channel he over here talking about he researching to be a firefighter i don't know how many of you know this but to be a firefighter you um number one you have to have a clean criminal record which this man does not have before anybody gets in my comments and they're like, you're always putting him down because he has a criminal record. No, I am being realistic as to what he can get and he can't be no firefighter. Okay, boo boo. Okay, boo boo. A more realistic option for Zach, I think would be an electrician. He could work on his own. He doesn't necessarily, um, he might not necessarily need to have such a clean background. Multiple felonies makes it very difficult, like period. And this is why he's in his 30s, I think. He's got to be in his 30s. And he's sitting here. Number one, he's still sitting on cases. I did my research, okay? I don't always do research, but just from what I know, just without looking right now, he has had some problems criminally in the past more than one time. And so this is the reason why, and they're not saying it on the show, but this is the reason why he's over here looking for careers, because he's been a career criminal, and that's the only type of career that he knows. So you know, it's, it's becoming very difficult for him to find a regular job. One thing that I mentioned in one of these recap family reunion, I mentioned that for a minute he was working with Cheyenne's family. My question is, why are they not letting him continue to work with them? Is there a reason why you don't want Zach working with your family or family? I should ask the family. Is there a reason why you don't want Zach working with y'all? 
Because why he over here having to struggle looking for a career when y'all have a business that he could be a part of? I'm just curious. I'm just saying. So although in the last episode, Cheyenne was dead set against having another baby because she didn't want to mess up her builder body. Now she says she's willing to go to a fertility doctor. This how I know reality TV is not real. Caitlin hasn't spoken to her mother for about six months after the Carly visit because when her mom came, she was drunk. That's on Caitlin's list of boundaries. You know, she told her mom, look, got to be sober. Don't come over there being drunk and all that stuff and drinking. And she did. And so Caitlin stopped reaching out and she decided to separate herself from her mom. But her mom hasn't even reached out one time to try to like mend the situation. And she's flabbergasted. Kate says the biggest struggle with this situation is the not having any help with their kids thing. And I was going to say, don't y'all have MTV money? But the money's not what it used to be when y'all was in Team Mom OG. The money ain't there yet. It ain't there like it used to be, I can tell. So, yeah. Mackenzie's daughter, Jaxie, had a bike wreck. It busted her tooth and it broke her arm. Cassanio was there being sweet and supportive. What a good man that is. Jaxie has surgery on her arm the next day. So Mackenzie has decided to fly her dad out to meet with them. She says that her dad absolutely loves Cassanio and is glad that there is a good man there to take care of his daughter. Now it's detox day for Leah and Victoria's dad. And Victoria is taking their dad gary another gary to detox leah does meet up with her father at the detox to have a couple of words with him before he goes inside now zach and cheyenne are at the fertility doctor to find out their options for saving embryos saving eggs and i understand that we don't know everything okay i don't know everything hell i don't know how to grow my eyebrows back but um I'm sorry, I keep talking about my eyebrows, but I'm very self-conscious. Okay, I need to grow them in, either grow them in or paint them on or something. Anyway, um, Cheyenne, you've had two children and you're not aware what an embryo is because I kind of learned this in like when I was like nine, you know, 10-ish. You know, my mom, she was not playing with the education. Okay, she taught me and I learned that in school as well. Uh, I think in the ninth grade, we had like family planning or some class, I forgot. But you didn't know that babies form as embryos before they become fetuses. You, you didn't have the book. You didn't have that book that we all had, okay? What's the book that we all had? What to expect when expecting, did you? Did you? Anyway, I read that book front cover and to back, back to cover to the front. So Gary and Christina are talking and Gary says that he hopes Amber and Leah get along tomorrow. And Christina says that, you know, Leah has gotten very opinionated. Well, that's what happens when you get older. You know, you start opening your mouth, start talking. Okay. And Gary then says that sometimes Amber says things to Leah that annoys her. Gary says that he wants nothing more than to have a healthy relationship for the two of them so that you know whatever but he has to be a parent and gary christina love you both y'all y'all on on ozempic or something because y'all look a little um look a little slim so leah says let's place bets on how long it'll take amber to reach there because you know amber's never on time i don't know what the hell she has going on at that house it ain't cleaning it ain't cleaning. So they're waiting at the restaurant. This lady is just now leaving the house at 30 minutes later. Gary, next time, don't tell her it's at 3.15. Okay, tell her it's at 2.15 so she'll be on time. That's a damn shame, Amber. Now, Amber finally shows up. She doesn't even apologize for being late. Because why? Because she has no class. She has no... She has a lot of audacity. She has a lot of that, okay? She has a lot of audacity and no class. Amber, you're going to show up late. And then you're going to say something like this. I got to play it for y'all because some of these things I'm just going to have to play. This was a lot and I'm not going to sit here trying to word for word it. I never do. I paraphrase literally everything. 
But this was very hard to follow because it was a lot. So I'm just going to let her say the stupidity that she says to Leah upon arriving late and not apologizing. Do you know, actually now at your age, you need me more than ever because you're about to get real crazy. Amber, why would you say something like that to Leah? She's going to get real crazy. No, she's not. Because unlike you, who I think got diagnosed pretty late, if there is any type of mental illness that trickled down the tree, she would be fine because her mom, her mom, her real mom, not you, her real mom and dad would get her help a lot sooner and they would be a good support system. I'm not sure if you had that when you were younger, but that was the stupidest thing. And stop telling her stuff like that. And where's her birthday gift? Cheap mother effort. You came 45 minutes late and it wasn't because you were picking up a gift. I swear to God, I'm praying to God that before this season is over, this lady's fired because I'm sick of talking about her and I'm sick of seeing her on Teen Mom when she's not a good mother. Christina is like, bitch, I'm going to go there and smack you. Like, Christina, you're being too calm for me. You Gary's just like, why can't we strangle her again? Like, why we aren't? Why are we not allowed to strangle Amber again? As usual, Amber takes it upon herself to make this whole this whole situation about her. Amber's like, oh, by the way, guys, I have a boyfriend. I had to rewind a couple times to hear what she said. She, Leah did not say be scared. She said, I'm scared when Amber said, I have a new boyfriend. So that sets Amber off and she's like, what is your problem? Whatever. And Leah's like, I'm just drinking my lemonade over here. And Amber says, this is why I'm so sarcastic with you because you just say things to say it. Amber, how old are you? Are you a grown up or are you a freaking child? I can tell you what I think you are. I can tell you how you act. You're not acting like a grown up. You're acting like a freaking child. You're, you've put yourself on the level with a 15 year old. Think about how stupid that is. I think I'm going to let Amber talk and let you hear the stupidity she was saying because i frankly i don't have the energy to go back over it i really don't and i need you to hear it from her mouth because it doesn't make any damn sense when i'm around her the, she's just like the, her daddy the worst of me come it's not the worst it's like the most sarcastic like part of me i want to just but then she pushes it she's also very sarcastic um i love her to death she's just like me i mean is she manic or what because you go from talking crap about your daughter on her birthday at her dinner and now you want to randomly show her some picture leah says straight up i don't want to see your pictures <laughs> go leah okay i really love when people stand up for themselves okay stop letting people walk all over y'all i don't care who they are i don't care if it's a boss at work i know don't want to get fired but you know what sometimes you have to speak up you have to you have to speak your mind you don't have to always be rude either guys okay you can speak your mind without being rude so she's showing a picture of I have no idea what and Leah says do you plan on having a third kid and Amber says I do and Leah pats her on the back and says well if it makes you happy now <laughs> people on Twitter were saying that Leah was not being sarcastic yes she was she was completely being sarcastic if you know anything about Amber you know that she has babies that she can't take care of and they end up getting taken away from her so if she has another baby obviously she's only doing it to make herself happy not because she needs another baby do you get me are you with me are you with me are you with me she was being sarcastic but guess what I'm here for it now I usually don't condone the disrespect towards parents but Amber's really not her parent. Amber has placed herself on her level. So you get what you give. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll allow it. That comment pissed Amber all the way the hell off. And she proceeds to curse at Leah at the table. What the f are you talking about? Thank what? You. That's rude. I didn't say nothing about him. That's the point. Like you said that, uh -huh. that you said rude though. That's Stands her up. being a dick. That was a bad word. See, you make me want to cuss. I have self-control. 
I do, obviously. You call your daughter a dick on her birthday? Amber, you're a... Listen. How dare you, Amber? I'm not going to get my blood pressure up, okay? Because I'm older and it ain't hard. But I hope they never invite you to another mother freaking dinner ever. Like, But unfortunately, Gary and Christina be trying to foster that relationship with you and Leah. But if she's toxic, if she's toxic, let her go. Let her cry. Let the tears fall down like rain. Sorry. I had a hootie and a blowfish moment. But let her go. Like, let her go live her life with her bald-headed uh, alien man. I mean, let her go live her life with him. Disgusting. So Gary looks over at Christina and is like, babe, what time is it? And Amber has the nerve to interject rudely before he even got an answer and was like why are you asking for the time amber why is it any of your damn business what he's asking his wife for number one okay gary's like leah has homework to do it's getting late it's about six o'clock and amber's like will you act like it's nine o'clock at night or something amber just shut your face please shut your face already it's a family reunion. Kidding. But it is kind of a family reunion. Uh, Leah is with her dad, giving him a hug, and he apologizes for what he did. And she just basically gives him a word to the wise. This is not going to be easy. Detox is going to be one, one hell of a situation you're about to go through. And then he walks to the door. She sees him off, and that's about it. Kate has a heart-to-heart -heart talk to Nova about why april is no longer really in their life and nova gets very upset starts crying saying that she misses her wondering if grandma april who is kate's mom misses them and you know then kate is like you know if people don't want to change they don't deserve to be in our lives and i get where you're coming from that but nova hearing that probably didn't feel very good so jaxie Mackenzie's daughter has had the surgery on her arm. She's going to be in a cast for three months and she's going to need a lot of extra help. Mackenzie gets a bit overwhelmed with this because she's going to have to have help in the bathroom, help everywhere. And Cassanio just reassures her that he's going to be there for her and group hug. And basically, she's still young enough that she doesn't feel she needs to preserve eggs and embryos. Now, Cheyenne is more open to the idea of having another child. After Amber wants to argue about him asking Christina for the time, Gary's like, you asked me a question, so I'm going to answer it. Amber is telling Gary in front of his wife that he's going to chill out. Or else what? Or else what, Amber? I'm going to need you to speak up sometimes, Christina. I understand you're trying to keep the peace and all, but don't, don't let her talk to your man like that. Amber says, why are you so sensitive? Gary says, I'm not sensitive. Amber says, I barely talked to you today. And Gary says, then stop talking to me. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to tell people. This goes back and forth to the point where Leah gets upset and starts crying. And she says, can the both of y'all please stop? She says it three times. I count it. So Leah starts crying, right? And Gary says, I'm sorry, Leah. And Amber says, what are you apologizing for? She says, can you both please stop? And then she asks Christina if they can go to the bathroom. Once Christina takes the girls to the bathroom, you can hear Leah saying she doesn't even want her birthday gifts. Soon as they leave, Amber is shooting more accusations at Gary saying that he's the one that ruined the birthday dinner and she is innocent and um, apparently has done absolutely nothing at this dinner. I swear to God, y'all better not invite her nowhere else. So everybody just leaves and they leave Amber sitting there by her damn self. They take the gifts and they're out. She's blameless. You know, she didn't do anything. I forgot to add this part because it's very important to note that after everybody left, this is what Amber says. So now it's like, okay, Leah gets to go and I, it's me to blame. Then this is why I never have a chance with her. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked my 
video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I post videos literally like every other day. I post multiple videos weekly. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.